Hi everyone, and welcome to this assembly to celebrate LGBT Plus History Month in the UK. The theme for LGBT History Month 2024 is medicine, hashtag under the scope, and celebrates LGBT Plus people and their contributions to the field of medicine and healthcare, both historically and today. Whether they are doctors, nurses, radiographers, clinical scientists, pharmacists, counsellors, psychologists, or anything else. This year, we celebrate the amazing work of LGBT plus staff across all healthcare settings, and look back at the history of the community's complicated experiences of receiving healthcare, and how LGBT people still face health inequalities even today. LGBT History Month is able to be celebrated in schools every February due to the abolition of Section 28 in 2003. It has been celebrated in the UK since 2005. However, the event began in the USA in 1994. The aim of LGBT Plus History Month is to promote equality and diversity for the benefit of everybody by claiming the past, celebrating the present and creating the future for LGBT people. So let's consider what LGBT plus actually means. L stands for lesbian, which is a woman who is attracted to other women. G stands for gay, a man or woman who is attracted to people of the same sex. B equals bisexual, and this describes someone who can be attracted to both men and women. T is transgender. This is a person whose gender identity is different from the sex that they were assigned at birth. Now, often there is a plus added to the end of this acronym, and this is to include any other sexuality or gender that people identify with. It's likely that you will know of many famous people who are LGBT. They come from all walks of life and are in all parts of society, from rugby players, CEOs, Olympic divers, professional models, chat show hosts, actors, singers, and so on. They are as diverse as everybody else. Let's take a look now at a timeline of LGBT rights in England and Wales. In 1967, the Sexual Offences Act decriminalised sex between two men over the age of 21 so it was no longer illegal for two men to have sex. In 1969, the Stonewall Riots occurred in New York in response to police brutality against gay people. And this was seen as a key moment to raise awareness about LGBT equality. And in 1972, the first ever Pride March was held in London. In 1988, Section 28 was introduced which banned schools from promoting homosexuality, which effectively stopped schools from supporting LGBT students struggling with bullying. And it stopped schools from educating people about LGBT issues. In 1992, the World Health Organization declassified same-sex attraction to no longer be considered a mental illness. In the year 2000, the UK government changed the age of consent for homosexual couples to be the same as heterosexual couples, which is 16 years old. And the ban was lifted on LGBT people serving in the armed forces. In 2002, same-sex couples were granted equal rights to adopt children. In 2003, Section 28 was repealed which means it was no longer against the law to discuss LGBT issues in school. And it's also one of the reasons why we were able to show you this video today. In 2004, the Gender Recognition Act allowed trans people to legally recognize their own gender. Also in 2004, the Civil Partnership Act was passed, which gave same-sex couples the chance to access the same rights as married straight couples. However, a civil partnership is not a marriage, and it wasn't until 2013 that equal marriage was given to same-sex couples, allowing them to get married. The latest advancements in LGBT rights came in 2020, 
when same-sex marriage was made legal in Northern Ireland. There are currently 66 countries where homosexuality is still illegal and, in some countries, still punishable by death. Many of these laws were imposed during British colonial rule. There is also a disproportionate number of young LGBT people who are homeless and LGBT people tend to have higher rates of mental illness. Let's consider some contributions of LGBT people to medicine and society. First, Dr. Sophia Louisa Jex Blake was a queer British physician who was one of the first women to study medicine in the UK and the first woman to practice medicine in Scotland. She was also the founder of two British medical schools for women. Next, Dr. Cecil Belfield Clark was a Barbados born physician who, according to those close to him, was known to be in a long term same sex relationship. Clark founded a GP surgery in London in 1920, which was kept open to the public throughout World War II and served the local community for 45 years. Dr. Clark also helped develop the mathematical formula used to calculate the proper dosage of medicine for children. Professor Margaret Stacey was a renowned sociologist and feminist who fought for the equality rights of women over multiple decades. Stacey proposed changes to thinking in medical sociology, which remain influential today. After the death of her husband, Stacey spent the rest of her life in a same-sex relationship. Sir Ewan Forbes was assigned female at birth, but knew that he was a boy from as young as six years old. Being supported by his mother in what was usually an oppressive time for transgender people gave him the confidence to live as his true self. His mother even went as far as to source hormone therapy from Germany. In 1945, after studying for several years, Forbes became a GP in Aberdeenshire, and in 1952, Ewan legally re-registered his birth and changed his name and sex. George Ward, better known by their stage name Cherry Valentine, was an English drag queen who competed in RuPaul's Drag Race UK. In 2015, Ward qualified as a mental health nurse and started working in a children's psychiatric intensive care unit. Ward was praised for speaking out about his experiences growing up in the Romani traveller community in the BBC documentary film Cherry Valentine, Gypsy Queen and Proud. Ward struggled with his rise to fame and with a history of depression, he sadly took his own life in 2022. Statistically, people who identify as LGBT plus are more likely to experience depression and other mental health problems. And it's important to note that being LGBT plus does not cause mental health problems, but LGBT plus people are often stigmatized and they experience discrimination and isolation as a result of the homophobia, biphobia and transphobia of others. Now, let's consider the rainbow symbol. This symbol has long been adopted by the LGBT community to represent acceptance and safety. Over the years, there have been several variations of the flag, with the most recent being Quasar's progress flag. You may see people in the community, in workplaces or even schools, wearing rainbow lanyards and badges. This is as a symbol to show that they respect that people are different and, more importantly, that diversity is worth celebrating. Now let's consider what part you can play to show that you respect diversity. If you say, that's gay, then question your language. It's likely that you didn't mean it in reference to homosexuals. However, using it in a negative fashion is offensive. Try to be aware of the language you use and what it might mean to other people. Let's end with a common misunderstanding in schools. The process of coming out means telling people that you are LGBT, 
And a common misunderstanding in schools is that if you come out to a teacher, they will tell everybody, including your parents. This is not true. If you tell a teacher, they will not call your parents immediately or tell other staff. They will support you and give you any advice that they can. The information remains confidential between a teacher and a student. However, there is an exception. If they think that you are in a dangerous situation, such as meeting older people while you are underage. So finally, think about how you can celebrate diversity this month. Perhaps you can use examples of LGBT people or scenarios in your schoolwork as a way of trying to usualize and celebrate LGBT people. Take care everybody and thank you for watching.